was the majority. And because of that 1.2 million, on almost 70 million have lost their European citizenship. And almost 70 million, four countries are being dragged out of Europe, three of them against their will. Is that democracy? Yeah. So there we are. See what you think. I am no politician. I am apolitical. As you know, I have no agenda. I have no great interests or anything like that. But those are the facts. So there we go. And, you know, look at what's happened with illegal immigrants. We've lost our clout in Europe. So they're coming over by the boatload now. Now, we do need to repopulate the country. We've got lots of work that needs to be done. You'd have to process all these people, send back the ones that you think there's nothing can be done here. There's, there's nothing we can offer here. But remember, this country was built on immigration. That's the lifeblood. And when you talk about people coming in from abroad, are you talking about the Romans, the Vikings, the Celts, the Scots, the Picts, the Angles, the Saxons, um, who else? Uh, you know, everybody coming in, people from France, from Italy. I mean, most of your English people are actually French or German or Italian or Spanish or whatever. What difference does it make? Let's build up our economy. That's the way to become a strong country. And let's stick together. Churchill, Winston Churchill must be spinning in his grave because his greatest wish was to have a peaceful, united Europe with the UK at its heart. There you are. See, I told you. And, and a European army with a single commander. Yeah, that's what he said, 1948. Winston Leonard Spencer Churchill, and he will just be spinning in his grave about all this Brexit, about us selling ourselves out, surrendering to the Hooray Henrys, who have got their hands up your back. <laughs> Working you from the back. Absolutely. Uh, right, Scotty, I'll say good night. I'll be on at eight tomorrow for a wee chat with everyone. Final chat of the lockdown. Absolutely, Kareem. Uh, good night, Kareem. Good night, Kareem. Lovely having you with us. There used to be brass monkeys on board the old ships. The monkey was a brass tree which held the cannonballs. Gordon Robertson, you are 100% correct. And when people say it would freeze the balls off a brass monkey, people think it's rude. They don't realize that when the weather changed, the brass uh, plate would start to um, contract and that would allow the cannonballs to roll off it. It would buckle with the temperature. So there we are. You're 100% Gordon Robertson. To Catherine, yes. Gordon, what about this one? That's taken the guilt off the gingerbread. Okay. Work out that one and let me know. What was the gingerbread? To Catherine, yes, she understands me very well, but I think she was programmed but never got the chance to understand English till I met her, says Marky Lago. Uh, so there we go. Linda Thane says, Michael Jackson had a pet chimp. Fantastic. Yes, a chimpanzee. That's so beautiful. Uh, good night, Kareem. Good night, Kareem. What was the name of the chimp in the Clint Eastwood movies? Stephen Douglas says, was that not Clyde? Clyde, I think, was the chimp. He was brilliant as well. Clint Eastwood, fantastic. Anybody ever see The Bridges of Madison County? How's that for a movie? Hey, eh? I tell you. There we are. Count, says Catherine. Chip, the chimp was called Clive. No, I think it was Clyde Davy, was it not? Or was it Clive? Night, Stephen, and all. Night, Kareem Dinky Doo. It was Clyde, Stephen. Says Marco Lago. I think it was Clyde Stevens, says Craig. Yes, thanks, Stevie. Night, night, Kareem. Take care of your dear self. Join us tomorrow. That would be fantastic. My spelling's crap, says Davey. Uh, thanks, all. He was so beautiful. You're fine, Davey. My Spanish aunt had a pet monkey. Her mother didn't like it as the monkey would pull her hair and scare her. Well, absolutely. 
Absolutely. I'm just going to have a wee second. Uh, here we go. Fantastic. 